Today we'll show you this long-awaited by me personally AMD processor. It is so rare in fact that I haven't found any reviews on it online. What you see in my hand is a late Ryzen 7000 engineering sample, which I bought for 800 renminbi, which is about $110 including delivery. There are no such things on AliExpress. We were sent a screenshot from some Chinese marketplace and we had to find an intermediary who would buy this CPU for us in China. Before releasing the processor, chip makers use such samples for their internal tests, as well as send them to motherboard manufacturers. But some of these would occasionally fall into the wrong hands and then end up sold at a lower price. Such things are sent out to boards manufacturers in batches and this one just so conveniently happened to have fallen out. Judging by the date on the lid, a year before the release of the Ryzen 7000 series, AMD already had such processors on their hands. I've been testing that for almost two weeks. Today, let's compare this guy with the retail version of the Ryzen 7600X, which costs almost twice as much by the way. Let's see how it handles workload in games, what's up with the frequency and overclocking. Let's look at its integrated graphics and at how it handles the fast RAM. This is MK. Today we're looking at a rare Ryzen 7000 engineering sample. We tried this processor with two AM5 boards with the A and B chipsets. It is defined as AMD ANG sample, which means a purely English sample. Trust me on that, I'm an engineer myself. Our test specimen is definitely different from the regular Ryzen 7600X. Their revision is RBL-B2 and the one on our engineering sample says RBL-B1. With such a processor, the BIOS needs to be updated carefully. Manufacturers may cut out their support and it's best to have a board with the BIOS flashback feature to roll back should something go wrong. At first, in order to speed up the process of making this video, we decided not to update the BIOS and test the engineering sample with the same version we used to test the regular 7600X in our previous video. However, cutting a corner like that was a mistake, which became apparent when trying to overclock RAM. It looked like we managed to squeeze 6200 MHz out of it compared to the 64 in the regular CPU, but then the game would crash and stutter and adding processor overclocking on top only made it worse. I had to delete everything and start from scratch by loading the BIOS version in which DDR5 overclocking had finally been fixed. And lo and behold, our engineering sample handled the Expo profile at 7200 MHz at CL34 without any issues. And a couple of hours of stress testing in MemTest showed that there were no stability issues at such a clock speed. In terms of the core count and supported features, there is no difference with the released version of the CPU. Six cores with 12 threads and all the necessary instructions are supported. However, the clock speed is worse. Our release sample can boost up to 5.45 GHz and the RenminB version is 10% worse, only up to 5.05 GHz. A close comparison of the engineering sample with the release one in the ADA64 memory test showed that their RAM controller, if not the same, is very close. The spread of values in terms of speed and delays is within the margin of error. But what caught my eye is the speed of the cache memory of all the three levels. On the engineering sample it is on average 10% lower than that of the release 7600X. Let's check how this will affect performance, coupled with a lower frequency. To begin with, we will test both processors at default settings on a Gigabyte B650 board with the latest BIOS with PBO disabled, only with RAM overclocking via Expo up to 7200 MHz. This time we cooled the processor with a Corsair water cooling system. The RTX 3080 Ti was our video card and our Windows 11 and all the games and software were located on a fast NVMe drive. We will begin our comparison with the benchmarks. In the CPU-Z benchmark, the engineering sample scored 650 points in single thread and 5700 in multi-thread. The regular CPU scored 15% higher, 750 points in single thread. This is the effect of the higher boost per core. In multi-threading, the result is also higher, 6000 points. But in relative numbers, the increase is only 5%. In 7-zip, which checks the speed of archiving and unarchiving, the difference between the engineering and release sample is marginal, 97 versus 100 gips, or about 3%. At the same time, the engineering sample was working at frequencies of 4.5 to 5.0 GHz, depending on how many cores were loaded. But the regular 7600X has a bigger spread, from 4.5 to 5.4 GHz. In TimeSpy, which checks the gaming performance of the processor, the difference is again small, 
Here the engineering sample scored about 9700 points and the release one about 10,100 points, that is about 4% increase. And finally, a tough test called Cinebench R23. The engineering sample with the default settings scored 1800 points in single thread and 14,000 on multi-thread. The release version is again significantly better in single thread, 1950 points or 10%. A 10-minute stress test in Cinebench revealed an interesting feature of the engineering sample. It runs much cooler than the release 7600X. Boosted to 4.9 GHz, it consumed 90 watts and heated up to 85 degrees, while the 7600X, having a frequency of only 200 MHz more, consumed as much as 25 watts more and heated up to 95 degrees. And this under a two-section water cooling system, which once again demonstrates the hot temper of the Ryzen family with their small processor dies. But this is resolved by undervolting. We can conclude that according to benchmarks, if there is a difference between the two processors, it's not something that you would notice. On average, the difference is 5-7%. to Only the single thread performance shows a more or less tangible difference of up to 10-15%. to And many games love single thread, so let's check it out. All games were tested on the maximum graphics preset, but with DLSS or FSR at ultra performance, so that we're not bottlenecking with our GPU. These processors are fast enough even for the RTX 3080 Ti and even in Full HD. And let's start as usual with Cyberpunk. The engineering sample showed itself at its best light here, maintaining the maximum 5.05 GHz and consuming about 65 to 75 watts. The regular 7600X boosted higher, of course, but it didn't maintain the stable 5.45 GHz, sometimes dropping to 5.3 GHz while consuming over 90 watts. As a result, the average FPS of our specimen is 115. A total of 7400 frames were rendered. The 7600X scored 123 FPS on average with 7900 frames rendered. That is, the difference is about 6-7%. In real gameplay, you won't be able to feel it. And overall, the engineering sample performed even better than the regular one, since it turned out to be almost a third more energy efficient with a marginal difference in frame rate. Moving on to the sunlit tropics in Far Cry 6. There is no DLSS here, so I had to turn on the blurry mess called FSR, but otherwise, the same ultra settings without GPU bottlenecking. Good single thread performance is just what's important for this game. And here, the difference between the engineering sample at 5.05 GHz and the regular one at 5.45 is quite a factor. The first one hit 113 FPS with 6800 frames rendered. The second one hit 124 FPS and 7400 frames rendered. That is, the difference is about 8 to 10 percent. However, it will still not be possible to feel it in the real gameplay since even the 0.1 percent shows 80 FPS for both CPUs. Let's try out a very demanding game even for such processors. A Plague Tale Requiem. Alas, there is no benchmark in the game, but even with live gameplay in the market location, taking into account the fact that the title is perfectly well optimized for multi-threading, there is no big difference between the engineering and the released samples. At most, 5-7 to seven frames difference, which is not really noticeable when your average is 70-80 to 80 FPS. And yes, the game keeps stuttering on both CPUs. Such is its nature, apparently. Let's move on to racing games. Let's check if there's a difference in Forza Horizon 5. The game has excellent optimization and doesn't load the processor too much, so there is practically no difference between the engineering and the release 7600X. 138 versus 147 FPS, or about 6%. Now let's give it a more difficult task, the Last of Us PC port, which is characterized by an increased load on the processor due to poor optimization. This is the only game in our tests where the processors loaded to more than 90%, that is, they were the actual bottleneck. That's why the difference turned out to be the biggest here, even taking into account the fact that the release 7600X constantly dropped the clock speed closer to 5.3 GHz. As a result, the frame rate differences reached 10%, or 10 to 15 frames, but still with an average frame rate of 120 to 130, which is not something that should feel. Now let's try to overclock the engineering sample to the level of the regular processor and try to get the same performance out of it. Let me remind you, A boards overclock only RAM, they can't overclock the CPU. Only B chipsets allow you to do it. 
This processor does overclock, but after half an hour of testing in OCCT, only 5.3 GHz turned out to be stable. When adding the extra 150 MHz, the engineering sample doesn't reach the maximum frequency of the regular Ryzen 7600X, but it is still 5% higher than what it can boost to with default settings. But does it make sense to do that? Hardly. 5% difference in frequency is best seen in synthetic benchmarks. It is by this amount that the performance in the 7-zip archiving test and the built-in CPU Z benchmark has risen. The gaming processor test in 3D Mark also showed an increase of about 5%. But in the Cinebench R23 test, the increase turned out to be the biggest, as much as 8%. The point here is that by default, the processor was working in this benchmark not at its maximum 5050 MHz, but 150 MHz lower. Overclocking via a multiplier forced the processor to steadily boost up to 5300 MHz, and as a result, the frequency difference turned out to be 8% which matches the difference in performance. In games, the difference turned out to be even smaller. And this is expected, given that the processor seldom loads at 100%. Even in a demanding cyberpunk, the average FPS has grown only by 6 frames or about 5%. It's hardly the difference worth chasing after. But still, the engineering sample didn't reach the level of the release 7600X by just a couple of frames. At the same time, power consumption and heating have practically not increased. In Forza Horizon 5, the situation is similar. The frame rate has grown by 5 FPS, but in relative numbers, it is only an increase of about 3-4%. In Far Cry 6, exactly the same situation. The difference between 113 and 120 frames can be noticed only in the benchmark. In the real gameplay, it is absolutely imperceptible. So the verdict here is simple. Don't waste your time overclocking modern processors. It's definitely not the difference worth the effort. You will be able to see the extra couple of hundred megahertz only in benchmarks which will not do anything to your real workload. But what does make sense to do is undervolting through the PBO voltage curve. By reducing the value by 30 points, we managed to increase the clock speed in Cinebench R23 by 150 megahertz from 4900 to the maximum 5050, while also dropping power consumption by a couple of watts. The same applies to the regular 7600X. Undervolting helps it to gain 1.5 of extra megahertz and at the same time throw off as much as 25 watts in 10 degrees, which brings it closer in terms of heating and power consumption to the level of the engineering sample. So reducing the voltage on the new Ryzen processors is a must. It remains to find out how the integrated Radeon graphics with a couple of RDNA 2 units at 2200MHz works. The drivers for the release version are installed without any issues and you can run Dota at 100 to 150 FPS at medium settings and full HD. Taking into account the fact that AMD has prepared such an engineering sample for installation in conventional boards, most likely this processor is a so-called qualification sample, which is sent to manufacturers for internal tests, and it doesn't differ too much from the release sample. In our case, the only difference is the core clock speed. Most likely, all the improvements that AMD made over the year when switching from stepping B1 to B2 are an improvement in the die quality, which allowed the processor to go 400 MHz higher. Now we have seen Intel's engineering samples, they have been around for years. Our screenwriter has been using the pre-release version of the i9-9900K for three years now, but the pre-release samples of the Ryzen CPUs are very rare. They were also a thing for AM4, but they were also sold only on domestic Chinese retail platforms. This CPU was found in the Chinese app called Pindodo. To buy it, you need an intermediary who would purchase it, pack it and send it to your country. Speaking of feasibility of buying such a processor, given the fact that you still need to find it somewhere and then bring it over somehow, the regular 7600X costs an average of $60 to $70 more. The 5-7% performance difference is not worth this money. And in games, the bottleneck will most likely be your video card, which means the difference will be even smaller or non-existent at all. On the other hand, you can find a Ryzen 5 7500F without integrated graphics on AliExpress. I've already ordered one and it's on its way to me. So when it finally arrives, we will test it and see about the differences. This was MK. My name is Mikhail Krushin. I'll see you later.